Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today we are talking about raising bottle lambs and bottle goat kids. Now, whether you're new to farming or if you've been doing it for years, sooner or later you're gonna end up with a bottle lamb or a bottle goat kid. Sometimes you may choose to get a bottle lamb or a bottle goat kid. Other times you may end up with one for various reasons. By the time we get to the end of this video, you are going to know how to take care of a bottle lamb or a bottle goat kid from birth all the way to weaning. And you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned till the very end because we have a very important tip to tell you that most people miss. So I am in my pen today with our bottle lambs. Now they didn't become bottle lambs because we wanted them to. They became bottle lambs because there was some problems either with their overall health and wellness during birthing or because there was a problem with mom. Our, our number one concern when they're first born is we want to make sure that they get that colostrum. And as we've talked about in some of our other videos, colostrum is only absorbable by the animal for a very short window of time when they are very first born. When they are very first born, they have about 24 hours to absorb that colostrum. And then the stomach starts to, we call it closing. Basically, they can no longer absorb the antibodies in the colostrum. By 48 hours, it's completely done. So it is very, very important that they get that colostrum. So if you have an animal on your farm that's born and you know what's going on, you can give them that colostrum or you can give them a colostrum supplement. Now, what if you get an animal from another farm and you don't know if they've had that colostrum? and we're outside of that 24 to 48 hour window. In that case, there are a couple injectable solutions that you can get. I know Premier One sells a product called OviShield. There's another company that sells a product called Bovisera, I believe, and I will put the link to those down below. So the benefit of those injectables is if you miss that window of antibodies, you can give them the injection to get them the antibodies that they need. If you have read the Pipestone Veterinary Guide to Sheep and Goats, which we highly encourage you to do. Dr. Kennedy talks in there about his practices. He says that once the lambs and or kids are processed and they're actually going after the milk and, and up and on their own, he gives them their typical injection that we utilize, that one milliliter of penicillin with one milliliter of CDT vaccine. He gives them the CDT vaccine again at two weeks and he gives it to them again at weaning. So what's the deal behind this? Why all these antibodies? Well, because these antibodies animals were not on mom and didn't get the natural protection that they need, we know that they are set up to pick up problems that other normal lambs and goat kids might not. So we want to make sure that we cover our bases. The frequency is because these lambs can't develop their own immune system completely until they are getting closer to that weaning age of six to eight weeks. So by repeatedly injecting them, we're sure that those antibodies stay current and up to date in the body system. And what are we going to do about formula? There's an interesting misnomer out there. There's an interesting idea that floats around out there that I hear about a lot about how fortified and high fat goat milk is. Well, it may surprise you to know that lamb milk, that sheep milk is actually more fortified with vitamins and nutrients and actually has a higher fat content than goat milk does. So it is going to depend on if you're feeding lambs or if you're feeding goat kids. Now, there are some very good powdered milk replacers out there. There are, although it may be difficult to find in your area. I will personally tell you that we prefer to mix up our own milk replacer utilizing cow's milk and adding extra fat vitamins and nutrients to it. Not a worry for you, you can find this. You can go to lanessafarms.com, go to our download section, and we have a couple different formulas that are built on there for you for sheep and goats alike. So the next question is, what if you end up with a bottle baby lamb and a bottle baby goat together? In that case, we want you to feed the higher fat concentration, which would be the lamb formula, because we would rather give them a little bit too much fat, a little bit more fat than not enough. Question comes up a lot, is this going to give them scours, AKA diarrhea? The answer to that is we have not experienced that. We have had multiple times where we fed both lambs and goat kids together. We fed them the higher fat concentration and we didn't have any issues with scouring. So. At Lanessa Farm Special 
Specialty and Heirloom Livestock, we specialize in educating you on small ruminant health and welfare. If you want to learn more, you can check out our website at www.lanessafarms.com or join our online Facebook forum. It's absolutely free. And you can find us by doing a simple search for Lanessa Farms Tack Box. So there are three preferred methods for feeding formula to lambs and goat kids, and they go in this order. First and the least favorable is the bottle. The second and moderately favorable is a cold pail or a cold bucket. And third is a milking machine or a Lactec machine. The machines, very, very expensive. This, least expensive, but least healthy for them. And the reason for that is we want them to eat like they do out with mom. Mom. What do they do out with mom? Do they eat four times a day? No, they have little amounts of milk all throughout the day. So they're never getting a lot. They're just getting a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And that's a lot healthier for their rumen. That's in a perfect world. We understand if you have to feed them with the bottle, what we like to do is utilize the Pritchard nipples. The Pritchard nipples are great. They screw right on top of a pop bottle and they have a ball valve in there that allows the air to escape. So the baby isn't sucking in a bunch of air. Now, the way that I like to feed them ideally is with them on the ground. I don't ever want to hold them upside down like a baby. If I do have to hold them, I will try to hold them or straddle them over my knee so they're at least in somewhat of a natural position. I like to make an okay sign. So I would do okay like that. I like to make an upside down okay sign like that and then tip the bottle up. That way I can cradle the animal's chin in my hand when I'm feeding them. So I'm gonna grab Tiny here and give you an example. So it can be difficult to bottle feed them when there's so many of them because they're gonna wanna fight over it. So what I like to do is actually come in the pen, straddle my my leg like this, make my upside down okay sign. I can take one hand, put it on the back of the head, and you can see how she will just take that bottle for me. Now she's well trained. She's been doing this a little bit. As you can tell, she's a professional at it. If I were to have a baby that was choking or not getting enough, I wanna go slow. I wanna take a break, give them four to five seconds, let them catch their breath. Now she's all excited, but you would give them some time to let them catch their breath and then go back to it. We don't ever wanna feed an animal that can't swallow. We don't ever wanna feed an animal that's unconscious. We don't ever wanna force it. Nice and easy. Whether she likes it or not, I give her a break every once in a while. Everybody else is excited. Now she's gonna get some more here in a minute, so don't worry too much about her. But I'm gonna put her back down, let her be with her friends. So this is a cold pail, and a cold pail is a little different. The way that this works is we're trying to mimic the way that they eat from mom. So what we do is we actually put chilled milk replacer inside of this pail. And what that cold milk does is it actually causes them to eat and they'll get a chill. When they get a chill, they'll stop. So that coldness is actually stopping them from overeating. Now for educational purposes today, we wanted to make sure that they were uh, doing this and we had to pull it for video, you know, the world of video. Uh, so this is at room temperature and they're very excited and they're gonna wolf this down. But normally we would put the amount that they need for the day in the cold pail and we would keep it refrigerated, keep it as cold as possible. So during warm temperatures, what you can do is you can actually freeze your milk replacer. You can make little uh, milk replacer ice cubes or or freeze it in a freeze a Ziploc bag with some water in it, something that's not gonna burst and put that in here. We use cold packs and things like that. You just wanna make sure you're not gonna use anything that's toxic that could get into the milk and hurt them. But this is your second option. When it comes to the cold pail, you can go on Premier. You can order these through Premier. You can have them specially made. This is a six hole cold pail that we have made. Premier also sells the little fence line holders for them as well. It may benefit you to get a bungee strap and wrap around to help hold that cold pail in place. This is the best thing you're going to get other than the milky machine. Milky machine, of course, is best, but that's gonna set you back a couple thousand dollars. A six hole cold pail feeder, if you are feeding it cold, can handle easily 14 to 18 babies. We've done it before, it works really well.
Now that last tip that I promised that I was gonna tell you about, this is where a lot of people mess up. Our goal as taking care of these bottle babies is to get them to weaning as quickly and as safely as possible and prepare them to become adults and to go out with the rest of their flock or their herd and be able to adapt and do well. You have to give them enough room to run. They are not caged dogs. You can notice we have a nice long, we have a 16 foot long by four foot wide pen and we're adding about capacity and you'll notice if you look here they're eating grain from the day that they come out here we give them free choice grain free choice water and free choice hay and the reason we do that is we want to get that rumen going as quickly as possible introducing the grain and introducing the hay really goes a long way to help prepare that rumen and to get that rumen going so we can wean them at six to eight weeks six to eight weeks is your total target date. The farther you go past eight weeks, the higher increased incident of abomasum bloat, that's that fourth stomach on them, it can and usually will bloat if you go for too long with the bottle feeding. The grain and the hay challenges that immune system in that animal as well. So it does in fact lead to a healthier immune system. The other thing that it does again is it gets that room and going and cooking faster. A huge mistake that you could make would be to do nothing for them but to give them a formula until it is time to wean them and then expect them to be able to go out and do what they're supposed to do. Please do not do that. I'm Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today and I look forward to seeing all of you again next time.